FizzBuzz was the first one and I couldn't even solve FizzBuzz. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. This is yet another compilation where I talked to Dorian from Dorian Develops about how you can actually get hired as a developer that's self-taught. There's tons of great points that we go through. And if you want to check out the full interview, it's going to be available at javascriptsimplified.com. And today is the last day that you can use the code early to get 20% off. So if you're interested in the course, I highly recommend you check it out because it's only going to be available with that 20% discount until the end of today. I couldn't dedicate full-time boot camp because I had to work a job. I couldn't go back to school because it would have kind of taken me too long. And at one point I told my wife, I was like, you know what? I just don't care. I'm going to get so good that somebody eventually is going to have to give me a job. And that was kind of like the mentality I took until I, I got hired. So. As you saw in that last clip, Dorian was incredibly busy, but he was motivated to become the best that he could be so he could get hired. And when he finally landed his first interview, he realized he was way over his head. And I asked him, did you get discouraged since he miserably failed his first interview? And this is what he had to say. FizzBuzz was the first one and I couldn't even solve FizzBuzz. Now, you know, four years later, FizzBuzz is something that's, it's, I, I would be able to do FizzBuzz fairly quickly. Like, you know, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be much of a challenge now, but at the time it was just impossible. And it was a little discouraging to answer your question, but I kind of got over it and I realized that I just had to just put my head down and, and keep studying because it kind of also made me feel like, I, I don't know. I'm one of those kind of people that, that if, if you tell me I can't do something, I'm going to continue to try to do it until I can. And I think it kind of motivated me as well as as discouraged me a tiny bit. But, you know, I use it to to light the the fire also. So, yeah, no, that's that's like the attitude. I feel like a lot of people, especially like self-taught in anything, whether it's self-taught web development, self-taught, you know, like guitar, whatever it is, you have to have that little bit of an attitude of like, you can't tell me no because you're going to fail over and over and over again. You're going to hit these roadblocks. And if you have that mentality of, no, no, I'm not going to fail. I'm just going to get over this and keep going and keep learning until eventually the roadblock is no longer a problem. It goes from a roadblock to a speed bump and you just walk right over it. I'm telling you, I would have been crushed if I went into my first interview like that and it just went absolutely terribly. Luckily for me, my first interview went much better than that, but I did have some predatory tactics that the interviewers used against me that I want to inform you of so that you can learn to avoid them if you run into these tactics. I went to the career fair at my school right before graduating. I applied. I had like five different jobs that I, like companies that I wanted to work at. I went to all five of them at the career fair, applied for all five of them. And one of them called me back almost immediately. Like within a week, they called me back and I did an interview with them. And on site, they're like, hey, we like you. We want to give you a job, but you only have a week to respond, which I saw as like a pretty predatory tactic. They were like really trying to snipe people early from the career fair before all the other companies responded. And I told them, I was like, well, I, you know, I have some other companies that I want to talk with first give me an extra week, you know, give me two weeks and I'll get back to you. And they immediately were like, fine, because if they really want you, they're going to make some accommodations for you. And I just called back all the other companies I applied for. And I said, hey, I got two weeks to decide if you want me or not, give me an interview. I interviewed with all of them. And it ended up being the last company I interviewed with, which is the one that I actually enjoyed working with the most and ended up going with them. So like, if I would have just accepted that one job off, for sure, it would have been probably a great job, but it wouldn't have been the first pick for me. But I told them, I was like, hey, give me an extra time. I'm going to talk to everyone else do all my other interviews, and it ended up being that last company I interviewed with that I was like, oh, this is definitely the fit for me. Now, it's great being in your first interview and doing your first interview, but how do you actually get to that first interview? That's by far the hardest part. Luckily, Dorian has tons of tips he wants to share on how you can structure your resume to make sure that you land more interviews at better companies. So I, so I have no education, right? I have no, no college. Uh, I am a high school dropout. I have a GD. Like my resume was, was pretty rough to fill with experience. So what I did was I took one of my buddy's advice, which was try to not list too much of your previous jobs if they're completely unrelated to programming, but try to talk about some things that may be programming ish that you did at those jobs, which is almost impossible when, when mm -hmm. you're talking about like parking cars and waiting tables. But what I did was I highlighted the projects that I worked on and I made sure to list what they were. I made sure that all of them were live so people could visit them. I made sure to list the technologies and every, basically everything that I thought that would make me stand out from something that I built, I would, I would try to list them on there. This is really smart of Dorian to go in and really focus on his skills as a developer through projects instead of focusing on all the non-related things that he did, such as waiting tables and parking cars. So if you have a bunch of projects that you've done, make sure you put them on your resume and really put focus onto those projects. And most importantly, the final thing that Dorian mentioned to me is by far the best thing you can do to land a job. Tailor your resumes to be specific to the 
jobs and the companies that you're applying for. And if there's things that you've worked on that will make you stand out because it's the technologies that they're looking for, make sure to like customize your resume for each job. And that, that will really help you. And I, I believe that that's what really helped me find my second job. This is the thing most people don't think about. They just spam out their resume to hundreds or thousands of companies and just hope to hear back. But if you just spent a few minutes customizing your resume and tailoring it to the exact company you're applying for, your chances of getting a reply back are astronomically larger because you are one of the few people that did that while the hundreds of other applicants, they just threw up a generic resume and yours is tailored to that company, which is really gonna make you stand out. Now, if you wanna see the rest of this complete interview, you're gonna have to check it over at my JavaScript simplified course. It'll be linked down in the description below. And again, use that code early to get 20% off, but it's only until the end of today. So make sure you use that as soon as you can.